Welcome to my weekly market roundup, 7th December 2019. I am Sagan Nandi, designer and developer of Q trading systems and techniques. I used to work in IT, I have retired now and I am living in Thailand. I swing trade stocks and sometimes I trade stock options as well. You may contact me using my email id tradingprofitably at gmail.com I regularly share stock analysis on my traders forum sagannandi.com as well as on my twitter page and youtube channel All of these are open to the public and you are most welcome to make use of them Before I begin, let me go through the disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on the trading systems and techniques I use. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. I am not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. I will have no liability for any investment decision made by the audience. As usual, in today's topics, I will analyze oil and gold. Using technical charts, they tend to impact related stocks. After that, I will try to identify potential trades using 360 degrees analysis. That is trades where the market, sector industry, fundamental and technical, all the forces are aligned. That was the last slide of the presentation. I will now continue with the live system. I begin my commodities analysis with oil ETF USO. Uh, looking at it using the weekly backdrop chart template and daily hop on or entry chart template. Together I call this at a glance template because using this simple template you can decide if there is a low risk swing trade entry opportunity at the right edge in only a few seconds. In the last market roundup, I showed that oil closed at this point. That was near the trend line support. Looking at that, I suggested that if price went up from there, you could try to take a long trade. And I suggested against taking a short trade if price fell down because in that case, the stop loss would be far away. This week, on Monday, price tried to go down, but it reversed on Tuesday, and after that, price went down. Based on my analysis in the previous market roundup, you could try to take a long trade using intraday chart, the Q fine tune chart, on this day using an early range breakout technique. That trade ended in a profit because price went up from there. What about today? In the weekly chart, the backdrop candle color is bullish. In the daily on Friday, the traffic light color is also bullish. However, price is right in the middle of the range both in the daily as well as in the weekly chart. The range is defined by the resistance memories at the top and support memory trend lines at the bottom. 
as I explained in previous market roundups also, when price is near the middle of a sideways range, it is safer not to initiate any new swing trade. Following that guideline, you may stand aside and not take any new swing trade in oil right now. Gold ETF GLD in the weekly chart backdrop candle color turned yellow neutral. Earlier it was bearish magenta. Though the color turned neutral, the shape is bearish with a long upper tail. The relative performance is showing that it is underperforming the market. In the daily chart, price is inside a range bound by resistance memory trend line at the top and support memory trend line at the bottom. It is near the lower edge of the range. If price comes down little bit from here, hits the support memory and then goes up from there, then you may look for a low risk buying opportunity, putting stop just below the memory trend line support. In the previous market roundup, when price was at this point, I mentioned that the likely move from there was to the upside. However, there was no Q long trade setup. I also suggested that because the likely move was to the upside and there was no Q trade setup in gold itself, you could look for a buying opportunity in a gold mining stock. I shared such a stock idea in my traders forum. Let me review that trade. This is my traders forum sagarnandi.com. I regularly share stock ideas for the USA market as well as for the India market. Let's look at the USA market topics. I suggested buying a gold mining stock in this topic. Let's have a look at that. Initially, I shared it 8 days ago on 29th November. That was Friday of the previous week. That was when I thought that the likely move of gold was to the upside and therefore looked for a gold mining stock to buy. As usual, I attached the 360 degrees analysis at that time. What did I see? The gold mining industry was one of the strongest industries on that day. Then I looked for a suitable stock to buy in gold mining industry and I found this stock SSRM SSR Mining. Its valuation was in the middle. It had accelerating earnings growth and a short squeeze potential. Therefore, to me fundamentally, it looked strong enough for me to buy. The last step was to look for a buy setup on technical charts. This is how the chart looked like right at the time I shared the idea. The weekly was strongly bullish, both in color and shape, and daily had just broken out of the triangle pattern with a bullish shape, bullish color candle. Relative performance was strong. This gave a breakout long trade setup on Friday one week ago. That was when I shared the trade idea using live analysis. Later on, I followed up with another post four days ago. How did the chart look like at that time? My initial post was on this day on SSRM 
as a breakout long trade candidate. In two days from then, price had hit the next resistance memory trend line. More than the risk taken in the trade was probably covered and you could book at least partial profit and apply trailing stop on the remaining position to make sure that the entire trade was risk free from that point onward. There was no reason to exit the trade because the stock was continuing to look bullish both in terms of technicals and fundamentals. Following this approach, you can take some money off the table and also try to let profit run on partial position. This is SSRM as of Friday's close. I suggested the initial buy idea on this day and you could book partial profit two days later. After that, for two days, price went up and on Friday, it pulled back a little bit. Remember, we saw that gold ETF GLD is near memory trendline support. There is a chance that gold will bounce up from that support area. If that happens, then SSRM may continue to go up further. And if you are holding partial position, that will give you even higher return in the coming days. After commodities analysis, I continue with the market level analysis. This is the highest level of the 360 degrees analysis that I carry out. The purpose of carrying out the market level analysis is to assess whether the market is bullish or bearish or neutral and if the market is looking bullish then I like to take only long trades. If the market is bearish I like to take only short trades. I am looking at the S&P 500 ETF SPY using the weekly daily at a glance chart template. In the weekly chart, the backdrop color changed from cyan bullish to yellow neutral. The color changed to neutral, however, the shape is bullish with a long lower tail. In the daily chart, SPY displayed this headwind possible reversal signal one week ago. At that time, I suggested caution. There was no short trade setup. As the headwind signal appeared, you could apply trailing stop for any long position you might have in SPY. That was useful because SPY had a sharp drop after displaying the bearish headwind signal. Subsequently, price recovered again. On Friday, it closed just below the watermark level that was created by the bearish headwind signal. It is also near the upper boundary level that is too extended to take any long trade. If price reverses from here, there may not be any short trade setup in SPY itself. However, if SPY reverses from the watermark level, you may look for shorting candidates from the underlying stocks. NASDAQ ETF QQQ This chart is similar to SPY. The weekly has a doji shape candle that was true for SPY also. The weekly color turned neutral yellow from bullish and the shape is bullish. It recovered very nicely from the watermark pivot level which acted as a resistance earlier and once the pivot was broken, it acted as a support. 
price also recovered from the memory trend line support level. In the daily, it displayed a bearish headwind possible reversal signal one week ago. I mentioned of that in the previous market roundup and suggested applying trailing stop in any long position that you might have. That was useful because QQQ had a sharp drop from there. And when price was recovering from this line, which is the weekly watermark support level, or from this line, which was the weekly memory trend line support level, you could switch to Q fine tune intraday chart and take a long trade in QQQ at either of these two price points. From there, price went up, giving a very profitable reversal long trade. At the right edge, price is below the watermark level created by the headwind signal. It is too close to the upper boundary level to try any long trade. Similar to SPY, if price reverses from here, there may not be any short trade setup in QQQ itself. If the price reverses, you may drill into the underlying stocks and look for a shorting candidate. Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF, DIA. Again, a similar picture. A doji candle in the weekly chart, weekly backdrop turned neutral yellow and the shape is bullish. In the daily chart, Daya also displayed a bearish headwind signal one week ago and at that time I suggested applying a trailing stop for long position. That was useful because price dropped from there. Subsequently, price recover closed below the watermark level that was created by the bearish headwind signal. Once again, if price goes up, there will not be any low risk long opportunity because price will be very close to the upper boundary level. If price reverses, DIA may not have a short setup. You may look for a short setup in one of the underlying stocks instead. Russell 2000 ETF IWM. This is only one of the four market ETFs where the backdrop color is bullish. All the other three ETFs had backdrop color in the weekly charts neutral yellow. This week it outperformed the market shown by the relative performance line tilting up. The weekly backdrop color is bullish and the shape is also bullish. In the daily initially price drop and then recover. On Friday price closed at the maybe slightly below the watermark pivot level which is acting as resistance now. Friday's candle has an upper tail that is not entirely bullish. Price is close to the upper boundary level. Even if IWM goes up from here, there will not be any low risk buying opportunity. Instead, if price reverses, you may look for a Shorting candidate in one of the underlying stocks. IWM itself may not give any short setup even if price goes down next week. That completes the market level analysis. What is the conclusion? The market is bullish, no doubt about that. All the four ETFs ended with strongly bullish shape candles. However, all of them are also extended, therefore you may be cautious before taking the next long trade. They also close just below the watermark pivot resistance level. 
you may keep an eye to see if price is reversing from the watermark level even if it does so there may not be any shorting opportunity in the ETFs themselves if the price reverses you may instead look for the underlying stocks to find shorting opportunity and you will look for the shorting opportunity in an industry that is weak and also in a stock that is fundamentally weak. On the other hand, if the market goes up from here, the ETFs are extended. They may not give a low risk long entry opportunity. However, you may look into the underlying stocks. What kind of stock would you like to buy? Buy stocks that are in strong industries and in stocks that are also fundamentally strong. By doing that, you will be aligning the market level, industry level, as well as fundamental level forces with your trade. These are the trades that I call 360 degrees trading opportunities. After the market level analysis, I continue with the sector level analysis, the next level of the 360 degrees analysis. Here I am looking at one month sector performance, looking at the sectors across three review periods. This week the red bars, previous week the green bars and then two weeks before that the blue bars. Any bar to the right of the zero line shows the sector went up and any bar to the left of the zero line shows the sector went down. This week, 9 of the 11 sectors went up. The red bars are all to the right of the zero line. And 2 sectors went down. Which sectors went down? Real estate and information technology. Overall, the sector graph is bullish. Many more sectors went up than went down. However, you may avoid looking for any long trade in information technology because it went down this week. This is another view of the sectors using scorecard and heat map. The scores over the 12 monthly review periods and then more recent periods, 10 day, 5 day, etc. These scores represent strength or weakness. Cyan is strength, magenta is weakness. And the base column represents acceleration, deceleration. Cyan is acceleration, magenta is deceleration. Sorting by the 5 day period, you can instantly see that energy and consumer staples at the strongest sectors this week and the weakest ones are infotech and real estate. Information technology and energy seems to look like mirror images. Infotech was the strongest sector earlier and now it is the weakest sector. Energy was the weakest sector earlier and now it is the strongest sector. Looking at this sector rotation from strength to weakness for information technology, you may protect profit in any infotech long position that you have and you may also start to look for shorting opportunity in infotech sector. On the other hand, if you had a short position in energy, now you may start to book profit or protect profit using trailing stop and also start to look for a buying opportunity. By doing that, you will be aligning your trades with the sector rotation. As I always say, sector level can be quite broad. To make more accurate trading decisions, 
you need to drill down to the industry level. Infotech is rotating from strength to weakness. Let's drill down into Infotech Industries. Focus on the five day period. Because the sector is weakening, we are going to look for industries that are also weakening. These are the weakest industries in Infotech sector. Communications equipment, application software, internet services and infrastructure, data processing and outsource services and system software. They are all weak in the current week and they were stronger earlier. You may drill down into these industries now, look for fundamentally weak stocks that are also giving technical short setup. If you find a stock like that, then you will have a 360 degree strain where the sector, industry, fundamental, technical, all the levels are aligned. For energy sector, you may do the opposite. It is transitioning from weakness to strength. You can drill down into the energy industries. These are all the energy sector industries. Sort them over five day period and look for the strongest industries. Those are oil and gas drilling, oil and gas exploration and production, integrated oil and gas, oil and gas equipment and services and coal and consumable fuels. All of these are very strong this week. You know that from the board case of the score. Now you may drill down into these industries and look for fundamentally strong stocks that are also giving technical buy setup. If you find a stock like that, then you will have a 360 degrees long trading opportunity. Let me summarize. The market level is bullish. At the same time, it is extended and all the four market ETFs closed just below the watermark pivot level. It is extended, it is near pivot resistance. But that doesn't mean the market is bearish, market is bullish. Therefore, if you had taken a long position and the stock is continuing to go up, you have no reason to fully close the position. That was true for the gold mining stock, SSRM, that I shared in the public forum. I could book partial profit at the pre-plan initial profit target level and I am continuing to hold the remaining position. The same is true for several other bullish trade ideas that I shared in the public forum. One was on CNC, the other was on CERN. Both of them had their initial profit targets. I booked partial profit and I am continuing to hold partial position because they are holding on to their price levels and the market is continuing to go up. At the same time, we are always prepared with an alternative scenario because the market is extended and the ETFs are near watermark pivot resistance. There is a chance that the market may come down and if it does, we will be ready with some short candidates. In which sector? Probably infotech sector because that was the strongest earlier and now it is the weakest. There may be several overvalued, overbought stocks in that sector. And you will look for shorting opportunity not only in the 
infotech sector but in the infotech industries that are weak as well energy was the weakest sector earlier and now it is the strongest one if the strength continues then you may find some low risk and potentially lucrative buying opportunities there wherever the market goes using the 360 degrees analysis you are almost always able to find low risk high probability trading ideas and I continue to share those ideas in my public traders forum. That is all that I plan to share in today's session. Thank you for attending. I look forward to seeing you in my next session. Have a great week and trade profitably.